Um, thank you very much indeed for the invitation, Paul, Mark at the back, for inviting me along to, to share a journey, a rather special uh, journey, both sort of physical and emotional, that culminated that fantastic evening over a thousand nights ago when we did the sort of unthinkable and went to Sydney and beat the Australians in their own backyard and lifted a trophy. I suppose you're thinking, what on earth is a bloke who chased an odd-shaped ball around a rugby field talking to a bunch of bankers for? Well, um, I passionately believe that the characteristics of, of a winning team are similar. I mean, the difficulty level of playing against 13 men against New Zealand is probably the same as trying to understand the bloody equity yield curve. The adrenaline that's going through your veins when you're about to make your first FX trade and you can't remember whether Bobby Barnett on the, on the Mark Yen said buy or sell is, is similar. And so these characteristics, are, I feel, are, are very pertinent um, to successful teams moving forward. So rugby players, we, 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 have, we, have, we have other examples. We have Lawrence Delalio in an Italian restaurant ordering the Pagioni until he works out it's page one. <laughs> Or Mallow Kelly a couple of years ago, good Irishman. 19 million bloody sheep and I can't get a bacon sandwich. <laughs> we had a war room not too dissimilar to this in our hotel, where you, the PlayStation, your three-card brag went on in other rooms. But in the war room, you spoke your mind. You said what had to be said and there were no recriminations. It was not. We didn't live in an if-only if culture. And then most importantly of all, we're trying to set up an environment of elitism. The absolute best at everything we do. Belief is the next section. Another thing the Marines taught us was dislocated expectations. There is only one thing you can count on in a battle situation, that events no, never go according to plan. So how do you combat surprise? By being in total and utter mastery of your basics, by preparation, by your fitness levels, by having a total command of everything you can do. So when things go wrong, and you need to change it in this theatre, in this rugby environment where people are trying to knock your head off, then you have the ability to change it because everyone's singing from the same hymn sheet. To have that ability was totally down to our 23rd man, our support staff, our backup team. When it went to extra time, we knew wherever it went, we were fit enough. We'd gone through training that Otis had taken us out of our comfort zone. So we were prepared for absolutely anything. In terms of the physical side of it, the bumps and the bruises, these guys were the hardest working people you ever get because we played against some pretty hard men. In South Africa, there's a favourite of mine, a guy called Andre Venter. Big Dutch Afrikaan guy, doesn't like colonial Englishmen. And he had this rather unnerving ability when he leant down at a scrum on the blind side flank of winking at you and smiling at you. Well, as rugby progressed, of course, with DVDs, not the Jason Leonard DVDs, the videos in terms of understanding positions and moves, they knew everything about you with particular setups. There was one particular time at Twickenham. I was set up on the, sh on, the, on the short side, and there was Andre Venter smiling at me. I won't do my African accent. He goes, Greenwood, I've seen this move. You come down the short side, I'll break your legs, and I'll rip your head off. <laughs> now, cowardice is an underrated virtue in international rugby. <laughs> I was going, change the call. Johnny, go the other way. Greenwood, I know you can hear me. You come down the short side, I'll break your legs, and I'll rip your head off. I'm thinking, Christ, Johnny's not going to help me, Lawrence is going to help me. Who can I turn to? Turn to my old referee, New Zealander, Paddy O'Brien. Paddy, come on, pal, you must have heard that. What are you going to do about it? Nothing. <laughs> but I wouldn't go down the short side. <laughs> <laughs> so with these unbelievably hard men, these guys, gave us this confidence, gave us this belief, and were absolutely integral to being the fittest, strongest team come the World Cup Finals. All these different characters were in that change room, were in that huddle, and we looked around, and we knew we wouldn't swap one of them, not one of them, for us, because we'd bought into this vision. Woodward had given us a vision to win this World Cup using leadership, using trust, using these attributes, we understood what he meant and we bought into it. We breathed England 365 days a year. We focused on the key areas, on the teacups, on the critical non-essentials, on the 23rd man. Woodward gave us this environment whereby players could achieve 
their greatness, whereby players could go from good to great. Coaches implemented it, and the players delivered it by listening and understanding what was required. 